good morning, colleagues, uh, uh, moderators. I'm happy to be able to speak at the conference. The conference is always um, uh, um, uh, large scale, and uh, although I'm offline and uh, I'm online, sorry. I hope my presentation is interested. Is the radio methods of uh, the diagnostics of the ovaries cancer self. Uh, um, quarantine has been extended in Chelyabinsk. That means that we can uh, observe the world from the window. So back to the topic of my presentation. We understand that the ovaries cancer is a rather threatening. It is. Uh, the mortality level is quite high, 25%. There is no screening. They're very often it's all neglected, and unfortunately, it's only a five-year-long uh, survival. We understand that uh, um, surgery is um, the most important uh, way of uh, uh, treatment and then other types of therapy. But in still, in spite of everything we're doing, we understand that the risk of uh, uh, relapse is very high. As for the diagnostics, um, now here we are lucky people because we have quite a lot of different diagnostic equipment, um, uh, laparoscopy, uh, ultrasonic computer tomography, uh, MRI, and positron emission tomography. And um, uh, 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 in our presentation, we will try to understand which particular method uh, should be applied and uh, when. The oncomarkers are very important. Of course, it's very important to understand the Romash index, and uh, um, it's, um, it's um, important to understand where these uh, markers are for different groups of patients with, of different age groups, and uh, we should not uh, forget about the uh, mutations. Uh, but as for the um, instrumental methods of uh, examination, uh, then here everything is much more interesting because we have the commuter tomography, and this, uh, there is suspicion that there is a disseminated process. Uh, there is uh, um, PT used, and we can see that the um, uh, level of um, um, evidence uh, is quite high um, when we use these methods. There are other methods of diagnostics, the diagnostic laparoscopy copy, and it's also possible to use the cytological um, examination in order to establish the diagnosis and uh, of the fluid in the um, abdomen and the function of uh, pleural uh, areas, uh, our cavities. And when a surgeon plans the treatment with disseminated over his uh, uh, um, cancer. First of all, I ask the question if this uh, cancer is resectable, if debulking is possible. But its debulking is not always possible. Sometimes there are processes when it is disseminated, the tumor is disseminated. And uh, the second question we ask is uh, the question about the uh, diagnosis. And uh, we must ha have reliable methods of uh, diagnostics uh, before we carry out the surgical intervention. And of course, uh, the uh, surgeons should understand the um, uh, problems of uh, spread. And, um, uh, and of course, we should understand the, um, uh, um, what happens with the um, bowels and uh, the um, with the. Uh, mesenteric artery with the uh, rectum, with the mentum, and so on. And so in order to understand if at the first stage, at the initial stage, surgery is possible, we can see the manifestations of uh, cancer as computer tomography. Here are the symptoms of uh, ascites. And the next slide demonstrates uh, for us the uh, symptoms uh, of peritoneal fluid. And uh, here it is very important to understand uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, localization of peritoneal metastasis, the gravitation-depending locations, uh, uh, the um, rectum area, uh, the uh, uh, 
the, the second picture. These are the locations where there are the barriers. This is the uh, diaphragm, uh, the um, amentum, and uh, the uh, mesenterium. And uh, then, of course, uh, on the right-hand side, the big um, amentum. And uh, now, we rely very much on those who carry out the diagnosis, because we rely very much on those uh, who can find manifestations of cancer hematosis, the gravity-dependent locations, for example. And quite often, um, uh, we uh, 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 support them with that so that they do not miss the um, uh, metastasis, um, the peritoneal metastasis. And we can see uh, on the final um, slide uh, numerous uh, peritoneal metastases in the uh, um, under, uh, di di under the diaphragm and then of course the assessment of the uh, lymph, lymph nodes and uh, we can see that computer tomography is quite sensitive for the assessment of the lymph uh, collectors and uh, MRI um, uh, shows a higher sensitivity 83% Specific specificity is 95% and this is to be considered in the process of uh, um, setting the diagnosis and uh, the metastatic nodes uh, that is the uh, PAT method, and we can see that on the slide quite clearly. We quite often um, uh, see enlarged modes, and you can see those uh, uh, three chains, and you can see the criteria of size for them is five millimeters, and we should always remember that, and it is necessary to focus attention uh, on the um, pathology that is uh, quite common. And then it is also quite necessary to exclude the involvement of the vessels. Uh, next, we can see the diffuse signs of the malignant process in the pleural, pleural discharge. We can diagnose this uh, with uh, CT. To understand what's the most important, what kind of uh, diagnostic methods to use, uh, CT or PET CT, this article will help us uh, where the um, advantages of uh, CT and PET CT are used, uh, are discussed. Here we can see the patients uh, uh, that uh, the gradle of the patients, uh, 3C4. Uh, FIGO since January 2010-2014, the article says uh, that the experts, and there were two experts of the uh, city experts, regardless uh, each other, uh, they make their conclusion and they define the uh, peritoneal cancer hematosis index. It turned out that CT showed uh, the better results comparing to uh, PET CT. PET CT is more effective in case of the remote metastasis. So the next article compares preoperative PET CT score uh, to assess uh, the complete reduction. Uh, two weeks before operation, PET CT was performed. Forty patient was enrolled in the trial. Some pa other patients, uh, the rest of the patients, uh, they have a different pathology. Uh, PET CT and tumor burden were uh, assessed uh, as a sign uh, for the complete uh, debulking procedure to be performed. Next article from Denmark. The article evaluated uh, the PET CT to assess uh, the advancement of the tumor. PET is not compulsory in the Denmark. But if the index of malignancy more than 200, uh, this PET CT is recommended to assess the resectability of the tumor and uh, the outcome. Also, uh, it's very important to assess the condition of the lymphatic collector. PET CT turned out to be very informative. 
with the clear diagnosis of the remote metastasis. Next article compared uh, PET and CT from Belgium. Patients were divided into groups and uh, the sensitivity turned out to be high in case of MRI comparing to PET-CT. Uh, the article from 20, uh, of 2015 from Italy, uh, laparoscopy findings uh, range from 80 to 90 percent. That It was recommended for diagnosis of patients and uh, assessment of uh, the resectability of their uh, tumor and uh, remote metastasis. From my point of view, the most interesting article is the article that was published in 2019. Everything was compared in this article. MRI, CT, PET CT, we see that in this article, very clear assessment uh, was made of all these uh, three modalities. The method of choice uh, uh, showed uh, to be the CT. But the disadvantages is uh, the poor uh, visualization of uh, the mesenterium uh, metastasis. The article says that MRI turned out to be the most informative methods of diagnosis with a high uh, sensitivity and high uh, accuracy, especially in case of the duodenum cancerematosis, of the electron cancerematosis, the movement of the upper mesenterial artery and uh, mesenterium root. In case of PET-CT, uh, the uh, significant findings uh, were made only in case of uh, their uh, preoperative assessment uh, with the use of FDG. Uh, very frequently in PET CT, the article says uh, that metastatic lesions in the lungs can be missed. MRI is not a unique method for diagnosis. Uh, the main methods of diagnosis uh, is still CT, uh, cheap, uh, very quick, uh, and uh, uh, quite informative. MRI, the most informative methods in case of cancer hematosis in the minor pelvis and in the abdomen. Uh, their PET method of diagnosis is an effective method in case of remote metastasis and uh, lymph nodes involvements, but very expensive. PET MRI of the whole body is a modern and rapidly developed method for uh, examination. Diagnostic laparoscopy is the method of choice to verify the diagnosis, but uh, it uh, it's not recommended to do this without CT because diagnosis laparoscopy can assess only the locally advanced tumors, but uh, with uh, diagnostic laparoscopy can't give us the information about retroperitoneal locations and uh, the uh, presence or absence of lesions and metastasis in the lungs. In our center, uh, in the city of Chilevink, so we conducted the retrospective clinical trial since 2015 up to November 2019. In our trial, we included patients 110 with ovarian and histologically confirmed the diagnosis of the ovarian cancer, the grading of the disease from the first up to four stage. It's, um, I'd like to say that before the surgical treatment, all the patients uh, during the first phase of treatment, uh, we perform a uh, PET CT of the whole body, MRI of the minor pelvis, and CT of the thorax and uh, the abdomen, and MRI of the minor pelvis. Uh, these uh, data, the findings uh, that we have, uh, we entered into the medical charts. Uh, we calculate uh, the uh, cancer hematosis, uh, uh, the index of the cancer hematosis. On the second uh, phase, we perform a diagnosis, diagnostic laparoscopy, or we perform the conversion operation. Uh, and then, if it's possible, we perform the uh, debulking operation. During the surgical treatment, we may say that the volume of uh, debugging operation was uh, at maximum level or sub-maximum level. 
As a result, after the surgical treatment, we could uh, assess uh, the sensitivity and specificity of each method of treatment in case of sensitivity. PET CT in case of the first stage. We didn't perform this in the in case of the second stage. The sensitivity are 100% uh, uh, CT sensitivity level. 100%. I'd like to mention that our um, radiologists uh, they are very experienced and knowledgeable. Uh, MRI in case of CT has uh, uh, in case of th uh, third stage has uh, the sensitivity ranging up to 80 percent. Conclusions: If we are treating patients with a person of the second degree, the methods of choice CT and MRI. If we suspect the advanced cancer, it's a PET CT. If uh, there is no morphological uh, verification, uh, we do MRI of uh, the at least three areas. In our arsenal, we have a great number of uh, modalities, PET CT, MRI, CT, and uh, PET MRI. We need to make uh, to be clear what kind of methods of diagnosis to use in case of uh, this or that patient. Thank you for your attention. Take care of yourself and your nearest and dearest. I think that we uh, will see each other uh, face to face in the future. And I am very thankful to everybody uh, who listened to me and to the organizing committee.